What's up, guys? Jason's here. Welcome to this episode video. By following the guidance in previous videos, we're pretty much sure about the basic configurations and settings of the S Series VoIP PBX. Honestly, there won't be any problem for us to manage this complex telephone system except the maintenance. So, our topic in this video will be the maintenance. Accessing the PBX GUI, it will be very easy to find out the maintenance on the desktop just by a glimpse, and uh, we will go for it directly. The key issue of the maintenance basically will be the system upgrade. Generally speaking, it won't work well without an upgrade for any types of software, nor can the S-Series PBX system either. Anyway, let's just check these items one by one. First, we will see here we get a notification which just alerts us to take a backup before the upgrade. That was so nice of it. We could also reset the whole system configuration back to the factory default. There are two methods for us to upgrade the system manual upgrade and automatic upgrade. We have several ways to finish the manual upgrade. We will need to download the latest version firmware in advance if the browsing file has been chosen. And just click on the browse. Find out the firmware in the PC local storage and then just upload it. What's more, it's also available to download the firmware from TFTP and HTTP server. The rest of our work will be as easy as filling the blanks. Just drop the parameters to the blanks which need to be filled. And uh, please make sure the information is correctly entered. Here we have another solution, the automatic upgrade. We could basically just click on the check for the new firmware to get the latest version directly or make a selection. For an example, we don't want to have an upgrade. Just ignore it by choosing never check for updates. Sometimes we just want to be informed before we have an update on the system automatically. Considering about that, the second option probably seems like the most proper method. Because the system will always confirm with us whether we want to have an update. And the last one, it will be automatically detect whether there are available new updates and update it directly. Besides, we could also set a schedule for automatically checking updates. That's pretty awesome. I'm sure there's one point people care so much, it's the system backup. As far as we know, it is a universal rule that we need to backup for any type of software system. Now, let's go check the backup and restore. Just click on the backup in case we need it for the system. It is simple as we could figure here. Name this file first. Basically, we could just name it by using this default name, which mentions the system version and date. What's more, it will be more clear if we type in some information on memo. The location type is the place where we hope to keep this backup. Local storage and additional devices are both okay. We will also need to decide what contents for the backup are we going to include three options as shown here. By default setting, call logs has not been covered yet. Perhaps we just want to cut corners when we set backup sometimes. Click on the backup schedule directly. Have a check on this page. Just enable backup schedule and start setting. Take an example. We want to have that automatic backup on 6 p.m. twice a month. Set it as this. Don't forget to select one available location to keep that backup. One more step. Set the times of rotation. It is okay if we want to configure it by ourselves or by default. Talking a lot about the backup, let's take a look at the restore. What we will need to do for restoring the system data is just clicking on the upload. Search for an available file in the computer and upload it. If there's something redundancy, we could just delete it. Sometimes it just never takes effect when we have some modifications on the system. We can solve it simply by rebooting. Click on Reboot Start Rebooting directly, or set a schedule for automatic reboot. Both are available. Besides, we could also reset the whole system by one single button here. 
and then all configurations were back to the zero. If you want to know about the details on the system working status, it will be an easy way for us to check it by looking through the system log. As shown here, we could just get a very detailed log list to browse what exactly happened on the system. And we can also customize this log as well. Just select items which we want to have in that log and click on save. Scroll down a little bit. Here we will get what we need. Sometimes we just want to have a further research if something wrong with our system. We could probably start a detection by checking our own operation to confirm whether we made mistakes. Here we go. Move to the operation log, select the object which we want to have a check, enter the IP address and the time period, start searching. We will have the operation log list at once. Click on download if it's necessary for us. The last point, which I believe is also the most important part, is the troubleshooting. Here we have four options. Let's take a look at them one by one. First, we will have the Ethernet Capture Tour, which is used for detecting the SIP trunk. As we can see here, we could select LAN and WAN both or separately. And we will need to enter the exact IP address and port which we want to detect. Click on Start, wait for a while, and then just click on Stop when we need to end it. The final step is just to click on Download. We will have the file which just contains the detection information of our object. Hand that report to a specialist who can analyze it for the final troubleshooting. What if we have something wrong with our FXO trunk? Just activate the Port Monitor tool. Select the port which might have a problem. Click on Start and wait for a while. That was kind of like the oscillation for patients in the hospital. And then click on Stop and download that report. Just send the report to the pro. What's more, it's also available to activate IP pane on S-Series PBX. Enter the host and click Start. Wait until we want to end it. Click on Stop. It will generate the final report of our IP pane. By checking that report, we could find out what exactly happened here. Besides that, if we want to monitor all the data packages traffic, go for the trace route directly. As same as Euro, enter the host name and get start. Till we get the auto-generated report, drop it to the tech specialist and wait for the final solution. Just as easy as that. Thanks so much for watching. That was all for the first series. Hopefully you guys could get what you need from our videos. Hit the button if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe. Here I will also share with you guys the link for ASTAR Academy. If you're interested in our certified test, you will get lots of available materials for ASTAR certified test plus ASTAR Academy resources on the web. By the way, get following us on Facebook and Twitter, you will get more updates. And, and, I believe soon we meet.